Ironman Australia was on the 5th of May 2019 and it was spectacular. Watch on to find out more. Hey, how's it going? I'm Will from Iron Wheel Multisport Australia, your place to find tips, tricks and experience in triathlon, multisport and endurance events and training. So on the 5th of May, there was the full Ironman Australia. That's the full Ironman course, the big one in Australia. And it was my first ever full Ironman. Unfortunately, there was a little problem that popped up a couple of days before, which I'll go into in a minute. Heading up to Port Macquarie now. It's about a four hour drive north. I will see you when I get there. So I've made it to Port Macquarie. It is a beautiful place up here. And I'm all checked in. Got my first time band, race number. It's getting very real now. So here I am at the Ironman finisher precinct. Just had the race briefing. For anyone who's new to Ironman, I would definitely recommend that. So the finish area is right there behind me. So right there. And in two days, I will be running down there. This morning I went on the practice swim. That was really nice. Uh, I found it actually really useful to go on the practice swim to kind of ease the nerves and reassure myself. Getting in the water, getting my wetsuit out, getting it all on, it just helped me feel much more at home, much more comfortable with the start of the course. And I've also done my own little practice run. I'm going to do another 6k run this afternoon. I've done a practice ride, which I went down to Matthew Flinders Drive. It's not actually as bad as I thought it was going to be but I can imagine at 170 kilometers into the bike ride that it's going to sting a little bit. When I tell people I'm doing an Ironman, number one question is, why the hell would you do that? And I suppose the main answer for me is that I wanna continually challenge myself. I always wanna push myself further. I always wanna do something more and continually better myself, do more and more things in my life that are great experiences that I can take with me. I've done marathons, I've done long bike rides, I used to swim as a little, when I was a little kid, so I've got the backbone for triathlon. I'm gonna do the full Ironman. That's gonna be my goal for the year. Am I as prepared as I could be for the event? No. No, I could have definitely done a lot more, especially in the swim. My swim training has been terrible. Similarly for the bike, I spend a lot of time doing indoor training on the bike, which is a very efficient use of my time, but it doesn't get me out there. It doesn't get me on the road. There's a lot more to cycling. When you're on the road, you actually feel the bumps, you feel the wind. The run though, I don't feel too bad about that. I've done a lot of the training in the run. That's my strongest leg. So as part of the check-in process, they give you your race number. And also, if it's your first time doing an Ironman, they give you this wristband which says, Iron Man, I will become one. And the course of the Iron Man was great. So you start off with the swim. Uh, it's a 3.8 kilometer swim. You start at the water inlet and then you go over a weir. So you have to climb up a weir and then down a weir and then you go into the Hastings River side of the water. You climb back over the weir and you swim back to the start. It was actually my fastest ever 3.8k swim. I managed to do it in about an hour and 15 minutes, which for me is awesome. Next up was the bike. That was a 180 kilometer bike ride. So you start off at Port Macquarie and you cycle all the way down to Lauriton and Dumbogan. You do a little bit of a loop down there and then you cycle back. You do that twice. There's one part, of course, Matthew Flinders Drive, which is everyone's favorite, which is a rather steep hill. And although while it is steep, it is short. So it is over nice and quick, so long as you can power through and get up it. The bike course is just really challenging. You've got the, the sort of the slow chip on the road, it's bumpy. You've got the hills and the sort of the first bit out of town and obviously at the end of each lap as well. And I think that just grinds you down. It's a sapping ride, isn't it? It's a dead road and that doesn't necessarily mean it's slow. It just means that you need to keep pressure on the pedals. You don't get any free kicks uh, like you can on other courses, like a course like Kona where you can uh, you know, take advantage of the nice, nice surfaces and the rollers. 
here, you uh, even if you don't if you don't pedal, you won't even go downhill quickly. So um, it's uh, <laughs> hey, come on, it's yeah. not that bad. So you, oh, uh, I live here, you know. Yeah, I'm listening, me. and um, sponsors are watching, yeah, which is great. <laughs> I mean, it's how a course should be, in my opinion. As um, Cam Worth calls it, free speed on the downhill. Free speed means don't relax all the way down, pull down those hills. You'll get to Flynn's Beach virtually with no effort. Okay, because one hill down can roll up the next one. Matthew Flinders Drive. It's awesome when you're going south. Okay, you're going to clock up some good speed. It's like a roller coaster. You get to the top, and all of a sudden you zoom down for free. The only problem on a roller coaster, to get back to the top, you've got to go up the steep bit. Don't think of it as a big hill. Think of it about 22 seconds of effort. Okay, 22 seconds of effort from the dip over the first rise to the top. Now, what people do at Matthew Flinders, and we talked about this on 7-8 Digital, is when you get to the top, don't stop. Finally, there's the run. And the run course is just a nice little loop around the Port Macquarie area. It's about a 10K loop, so you do that four times, which brings you to your 42.2 kilometers. And for each lap of the run course, you do need to pick up a new run band. So you had the, oh, what was it? The red, then you got the white, then you got the orange, then you got the green. You get the green, then you can go to the finish line. The race really begins halfway through the run, and it's so easy to get excited and burn some matches too early. And so just cool your jets and um, chill out, because all those people that are passing you early on, uh, there's a good chance you'll get them back. So uh, just take it easy and, and uh, build into the race and make the last part of the race count. As I mentioned, unfortunately there was a little bit of a complication for me going into the race. So the two days before, on the Friday night, I started to feel a little bit funny, started to feel a little bit unwell. So not all is smooth sailing on the Ironman journey. Unfortunately, last night I started coming down with a few cold symptoms. While I should be fine to do the event, I may not reach my 11 hour target and I will be taking in some medication to help clear my stuffy nose throughout the day. I do not want the stuffy nose to be affecting my race. So obviously this is a little disappointing for me. I didn't really anticipate for this to happen and especially only one and a half days before the event. But you can't control what happens. You just got to go with it and do your best. So now I'm heading back to my accommodation. I'm going to pack all my transition bags. So the bike bag and the run bag pack my street gear bag, get my bike ready for check-in, and then I'm gonna go check my bike in, check the bike gear bag and the run gear bag in. Alright, so I check my bag in, check my bike in, check my helmet in. It's race day, I've lined up for the toilet, finally got through, and I think I'm ready for race day. <clears throat> Unfortunately, my cold hasn't let up, so I am gonna be racing with a bit of a cold, which won't be particularly fun, but I've got medication to take during the day, so that'll get me through, I just won't go as hard. To everyone out there racing today at Port Macquarie, Best of luck to you all. I'm sure by the time I post this, the race will be finished, of course. I'm sure you'll all have an awesome day. Have fun and see you in the next one. Now I'm gonna quickly meet some of my teammates from my tri club and some friends. Do last minute prep, get into wetsuit, lube up, drop my special needs bag off, and then we're in the water. Man, this really crept up so fast. You think it's so far away, but then it just creeps up like crazy. So, I had a quick trip to the GP this morning, and yes, I've got a viral infection, a bacterial infection, and gunk buildup in my left lung, which is probably why I felt like crap this morning and most of yesterday. Today, we've just got the roll down ceremony, the awards, and the after party. 
which should be a bit of fun. Hopefully I'll be able to eat something at this. I haven't had much of an appetite since yesterday. I still went ahead with the race, which was great. I still finished, so that's great. The main point of doing the Ironman, especially the first time, is to finish, to become the Ironman. And with all the training I was doing, it really felt like the distance was easy. The only problem was that I started to feel nauseous and started to overheat and just have a lack of energy throughout, especially the second lap of the bike and the run. And I really went through a roller coaster of emotions that day. When I first got out of the swim and for the first lap of the bike, I was feeling ecstatic. I was feeling, this is great. I'm doing faster than I thought. I can actually achieve my sub 11 hour goal. Then I started to feel tired. I started to feel sick and nauseous and things started to catch up with me. And I started to feel really disappointed and really sort of upset that I wasn't reaching my goal, that I wasn't able to achieve it. But then I came to the final sort of emotion, which was just general happiness and pride because I'm there. I'm still doing it. I'm still in the race. I'm going to finish no matter what. And I'm going to be called an Iron Man in the end. I can always come back next time and achieve my sub 11 hour goal for now. The goal is to finish. The goal is to achieve the Iron Man, to be called an Iron Man. An Iron Man regardless of whether you do it in eight hours or 17 hours, it is still a massive undertaking. It is still a massive thing, a huge thing to do, and takes a lot of energy and time and training and bringing yourself to that point. And no matter who you are, when you finish that Ironman, you deserve a congratulations. And at the end, of course, you get the, the medal, you get the towel, you get the, the shirt, and if you get a chance on the Monday after the event, you can also go to the merchandise hall and they've got the finishers range. So jackets that say finisher. I managed to get in, I managed to get a size that I wanted, which was great, but you do need to be quick. To everyone who did the Ironman on the 5th of May and the half Ironman as well, I hope you had an awesome day. I hope you managed to achieve your goals or at the very least, I hope you managed to have fun and enjoy the experience. So what would be my biggest uh, takeaways and things that I learned from doing the Ironman Australia and being my first ever Ironman. You wanna make sure that you train as much volume as you can. You wanna make sure that you're used to those distances, the longer distances, especially you know, running for four, five, six hours after doing the 180K bike ride. So you wanna be very used to doing that 42 kilometers, maybe not practicing the full 42, but maybe practicing up to 30, 32, running for about three to three and a half hours and getting used to doing that. And the same for the swim and the bike, although for those two, you can actually do the full distances. So practice swimming your 3.8 or even over training, so swimming four kilometers or longer. You also want to try and practice cycling that full 180k, whether that's uh, indoors, outdoors, wherever you can, you want to get that time in the saddle, make sure that you're used to sitting in that saddle, taking in nutrition for five, six, seven, eight hours on the bike. And while my stomach wasn't necessarily great on race day, that was actually due to getting a cold or whatever it was a couple of days before the race. And that's also something which you can't really prepare for. Um, but next time I will definitely be taking multivitamins, uh, garlic, vitamin C, whatever I can to make sure that I stay in as healthy a possible condition in the month, especially leading up to the race. I don't want to get sick again on race day. It's not fun to have to race when sick. It's not as fun as it could be racing when you're at your optimum, when you're at your prime. So try and stay as healthy as possible. Stay away from people that have coughs and colds and flus and whatever, and stay healthy for race day. But also know that whatever happens on race day happens. You're dealt with whatever cards you are dealt with on the day of the race. So you have to go with it. You have to go with it no matter what. So you just make the most of what you're given and do as, as well as you can given the circumstance, given the scenario. So first of all guys, you've done the first big challenge and that's getting to the start line. My tip, and you know, I've done 13 of these Ironman events over the years, is get yourself organized. Start when you pack in your bags to visualize your race. So what that by that I mean at the hotel or at wherever you're staying in your accommodation, 
plan your swim. Put out in front of you what you need for that swim. Wetsuit, goggles, cap. What am I going to wear under my wetsuit? Do I need Vaseline? Of course you will. Oh, Vaseline. Oh, what, what suit am I going to wear? What do I need for my bike? Shoes, helmet, sunglasses, nutrition, hydration. Okay, plus whatever you need to do. Same on the run. Actually see what you've got to do on that race. Talk to yourself. That's what I'm going to do in the swim. That's what I need in the swim. That's what I need in the bike. That's what I need in the run. If you're thinking, do I or don't I need that, put it in the bag. You don't need to use everything that's in that bag, but there's nothing worse on the day saying, geez, I should have put that in. There'll be times where you start asking yourself, why am I doing this? But I promise you, dig deep. You'll, if you go into a little bit of a lull, you will come out of it. You do come out of it. And you may go back in again, but you'll go in and out all day long, okay? Just hang tough. Think about all the time that you've dedicated. Did you attend the Ironman Australia or the Half Ironman event on the same day? Let us know in the comments section below how you went. And if you've got a spare couple of dollars, you can help prevent and cure disease and disability of the brain and nervous system by donating to my charity run in the Sydney Morning Herald Half Marathon next week where I'm running on behalf of Neura. I'll leave a link in the description box below and also in the comments section down below. And as a little bit of extra fun, I'll be running in a Forrest Gump costume. To check out the video I did for the Western Sydney Half Ironman, I'll leave a link up here. If you want triathlon content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.